Hi, this is Natalie Rydstrom with this week's industry news updates reporting for sportsbookreview.com. BetOnline has acquired sportsbetting.ag. The Panama-based sportsbook gave SBR an exclusive statement on the deal as we reported in yesterday's breaking news bite. Management also asked players for their patience while account records and balances are restored following the data migration. SBR asked players with questions to write to help at sportsbookreview.com during this time. Pinnacle Sports SBR Rating A Plus has launched a Czech language version of their website. The enhancement is one of many Pinnacle has made to the ASI software platform. SBR recently completed a video tour of Pinnacle, which breaks down the navigation, usability and Pinnacle market offerings. Pinnacle Sports operates on the lowest bookmaking margins in the industry. More trouble for Bet770 Sportsbook. A player tells SBR that he requested a £240 withdrawal on June 14th. He states that although Bet770 promises e-wallet payments within 72 hours, he's been given no update on the status of his payout. The player notes that Bet770's customer service telephone number is unavailable. SBR has recently covered unfair bonus tactics by Bet770, where players are given wagering ultimatums, give up their bonus or agree to wager for as little as $1 per bet. The Bet770 case remains outstanding. And finally, a bet at home player may have had his hand caught in the cookie jar. A player told SBR that he deposited £300 for Euro 2012, completed his wagering requirements and won approximately €2,500. The player provided ID to bet at home before his account was locked. The player was told the following. The betting account has been locked because we have detected that there have been multiple registrations from your computer that redeem bonuses. Please note that this is a violation of our voucher terms and conditions. The player acknowledged to SBR that his wife and son also share internet access with him. The player fe feels he's being discriminated against due to being from a family of gamblers. SBR is investigating the claim. Now, for more insight on this case, we welcome lead dispute analyst Justin Seven to the program. Justin, is this one of the most ridiculous multi accounting explanations you've heard from a player? Uh, yes, it's, it's ridiculous, and I've heard it from many players. Uh, Bet at Home has rules on point, and most sports books do, saying you cannot have multiple accounts from the same physical address or the same IP address, and I'm pretty sure in this dispute that occurred. But on the other hand, Bet at Home does bear some of the blame because they let the player keep playing. You know, if it were an A-rated book, I would expect them to close the account after one bet or as soon as you know they could identify it. But by delaying, they had the opportunity to win his money and have, you know have the player bust out before he got caught. Now, it doesn't mean that he's going to get more than his deposit, but it also means that Bet at Home is probably not rated higher than C. Okay, and do you get a lot of multi-account cases? That's probably half of all the complaints I get. Wow, so it happens quite a lot. And why do people multi-account? Well, there are two main reasons players uh, will try to multi-account. The first is to redeem a bonus. For example, if you can have a $100 sign-up bonus the first time you deposit, and then you wipe out or you make money, if you have the ability to create another account, you can keep getting you know, a $100 bonus every time you create a new account. If you create 20 uh, new accounts, you could, in theory, steal $2,000. And there are professionals who solely do this. Now, the other reason that people often multi-account is for uh, limits. Basically, they get tossed from a sports book for being a smart player, or they have their limits cut so low, so they try to open up a new account so they can keep betting high limits. Okay, and is there much a sports book can do to help protect themselves against this? There are a lot of things a sports book can do based on each issue. The bonus issue, the, they can do you know, standard fraud prevention techniques. But a better way for a sportsbook to defend against it than checking IDs is to make sure that the bonus is not attractive to professional cheats. And some of the ways, you know, one of the best ways to do that is what's called an end bonus. That is, a player has to meet the rollover before getting the bonus. Uh, I think five dimes used to do something like that. As far as circumventing uh, cheats who are trying to, you know, get around your limits, you know, reduce limits or closed accounts, one of the most useful things a book can do is profile player bets constantly. And as soon as you see you know, if, if the very first two bets a book sees are something that they don't want, they should close the account then. And not only will that catch fraudulent players, it'll catch undesirable customers quickly also. 
So there are many preventative methods that a sports sport can adopt, yet it still does go on. Definitely. Although I think a lot of sports books lack the expertise to mm. identify, you know, how to get rid of these players. Right. Okay. Uh, moving on now, uh, I mentioned in the beginning of the show, uh, and it's been a hot topic over the last couple of days now, what do you make of Bet Online's acquisition of sportsbetting.ag? I think this is a, fantastic for the sports betting players. And there are you know, two beneficiaries. First, all the players who have outstanding payouts, uh, this is going to help them. Some of these payouts have been backlogged for three or four months. Now, these old payouts aren't going to be resolved instantly, but they have a much better chance of getting paid in full than they did before, even if it does take a while to verify everything. The second group of people who are going to benefit from this are people who had complaints against the old sports betting family. For example, we had a dispute from two or three years ago where a player opened up two accounts. He opened up one account at sports betting and another one at Win For Real after telling, asking customer service that this was okay. Customer service told him he could do it. He opened up the second account, one, I think $26,000, and they seized the money from him. So what will happen is Bet Online will probably revisit these older disputes that were filed with SBR. And this gives them, a, you know, the players a second chance to get their money back. Yes, that's right. And of course, it will take some time, obviously, to sort of revisit all of these old cases. But I'm sure they're going to get to it. Now, that's all we've got time for. Thank you, Justin, for joining us. And thank you to you for tuning in. I've been your host, Natalie Rydstrom, reporting for sportsbookreview.com.